let us first try to understand the context of today's gospel. It is very important to know that the eleventh hour people were not lazy people. They were not people who were trying to avoid work. They genuinely wanted to work. It was just that nobody had hired them. In those days, the marketplace was like a labor exchange. People went there early in the morning and then waited for an employer to come along. If a man was a tradesman, he brought his box of tools along with him. But gathered there was mostly casual laborers, those without any particular skill or expertise, not like many of you are all specialists in one area or another. In the parable then, we are dealing with what was considered the lowest class of worker. So, if an employer needed some workers, he would go to the marketplace, look at what was on offer, and took away the most promising ones. Therefore, by the eleventh hour, what was left? Nothing but the rejects, the leftovers, whom nobody would employ. And now, here is a strong point of the parable, the idea that any employer would come along and take these people on and doesn't mind paying them the same wages as the others. This idea was unthinkable. So we can now understand better why those who will work all day long objected so strongly when the 11 hour people were treated as equals with them. Now, who was Jesus talking about in the parable? The 11 hour people. And I believe that applied to most of us. Don't forget that. Huh? We are also 11 hour people. The 11 hour people were the sinners and Gentiles, the so called bacons. Those who have been working all day long were the Jews. The vineyard was the kingdom of God. So, what was Jesus? So, what Jesus was saying was this God was offering the kingdom to sinners and Gentiles, to bacons, on equal terms with the Jews. Naturally, the Jews objected strongly. Violent rejection. Eh? Equal? How could it be? It was unfair. They thought that they deserved preferential treatment, special privilege. Just like today, perhaps even in our own country, some of our Malay Muslim brethren thought they deserve special treatment, special privilege. Equal cannot be. So, what was being undermined was the innate sense of superiority of the Jews over the Gentiles. Superiority. In Malaysia, we have the Ketuanan Melayu, a kind of superiority. Generosity was the last thing they wanted. Why? Because it will equalize everything. 
It took away their motive for being good and virtuous, namely an earned reward. They assume that God worked on the merit system. According to this system, you earn your reward by your hard work and contributions, and God will give you a proportional reward. You work little, you will get little. But Jesus says, no, God doesn't work that way. That is not the ways of the kingdom of God. God treats us according to our needs. So, those people, the 11 hour worker, they may have seven children, a big family, a big family, they may have the same needs as those who work at the first, third, and sixth hour. Jesus may see it that way. They have the same needs. They may work at the 11 hour. A family, seven, eight of them. Today, I don't know, the, at least a daily 150, 200 uh, for survival. Same needs. So God, God treats us according to our needs, not according to our performance, according to our qualifications, according to our working hours. God does not operate according to our expectations or to a marriage system, but according to His generosity. God is generous and His generosity is extended to everybody, even to sinners and beacons. So God does not work on the merit system. Jesus rejects this idea of a God who pays according to human merits. He condemns anybody who claims, who claims to be in credit with God. That God owes us something, that God owes us a reward because we think we have done and contributed so much to the church, so much to, to society. For Jesus, the only attitude in front of the Heavenly Father is that of a child who does not claim any right, who cannot merit anything, who always expect his father to be kind to him, that's all. And from God, from God, we can only receive gifts and be grateful. To know whether you are growing in your spiritual life, one criteria is very, very simple. You are a very grateful person. A grateful person will never complain because you're grateful. Everything is gifts. That is the ultimate. Joyful and grateful. Everything is gifts. God doesn't owe us anything. Nobody owes us anything. Everything is gift. Be grateful. Children, be grateful. We are also children. Be grateful. So with God, there is no such thing as racial discrimination, no seniority, no supremacy. Like the Pharisees, we may have the tendency to look down on people. We may expect preferential treatment, special privilege, special respect, simply because we were ahead of the rest, we were the first, or we were the seniors. With God, there is also no such thing as too early, too long, too soon, too late. A baptized
baptized child who dies can receive the same reward as the old person who dies after having suffered so much and accomplished many things. A great sinner who is converted will be equally welcomed by God with a very special celebration. Receive the same reception like the saint who has been good all his life. In God's eyes, all service, big or small, are equally important. That's why God says in the first reading through prophet Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts, your ways are not my ways. They're totally, totally, totally different. So with God, what is important is not the length of our service, how many years we have served in the parish, not the amount of service, what a lot of work, you know, but the love in which that service is performed. It's the purity of motives. Mother Ter- Saint Mother Teresa of Kokota once said, I am not sure what heaven will be like, but I do know that when we die and the time comes for God to judge us, He will not ask, how many good things have you done in your life? Rather, He will ask, how much love did you put into what you did? How much love, true love, you know? Uh, not our ego, you know? Uh, not to satisfy our, not to fulfill our psychological needs. Uh. Then, according to this uh, late Jesuit father, Anthony Di Mello, he says, whenever a reward is offered or sought, love uh, becomes uh, mercenary. Let us pray. Lord, teach us to love together. Lord, teach us ah, okay. Eh? Lord, together. Lord, teach us to love and serve generously without expecting any special treatment or reward. Let our main concern not be about the reward, but simply the joy, the joy of loving and serving you. Come, Holy Spirit, uh, let the fire of joy, uh, the fire of joy of loving and serving you fall upon us.